Hi everyone and welcome to my new YouTube channel. Uh, this is Lubans Miniatures and I am Luban. In this first video I will teach you how to paint a blood bowl orc line man using mostly contrast paints. Uh, it's kind of a quick job so you get your team on the pitch in no time. Uh, if you like it, let me know in the comment section below, and if you really like it, subscribe. See you at the end of the video. I primed uh, the orc with Wraithbone spray, and then I started by painting it with some Yandan yellow contrast paint. I used a really cheap brush from Wish, which was a tip from Emil at Squidmore Miniatures. Uh, I think I bought 10 brushes for like one dollar. It's insane. And they actually work pretty good, especially for contrast paints, which have a tendency to ruin your good brushes because the paint soaks really far up your bristles and uh, gets weird and stiff. So uh, for contrast paints, I would recommend using some cheaper brushes, actually. Uh, the trick when painting with contrast paints is to be really neat. You have to get your paints where you want them. Because if you paint outside where you want to, it's... Yeah, it's a pain in the ass, because either you have to reapply the base coat and Wraith bone paint is not very good. The spray is awesome, but the paint is not very good. So uh, try to stay within your areas. Uh, if you get some tiny bit of paint outside, you can remove it with a damp dry brush. For the skin, I used Creed Camo, uh, which is a much better orc skin color than uh, orc flesh, which I think is way too green, too vibrant and it really it doesn't give you the contrast it promises but this paint is nice it's kind of muted and uh, i think it's more orky i'm gonna use it for my entire orc fantasy army orc and goblin fantasy army and uh, yeah it's promising uh, of course you won't get any golden demon standard painting done with contrast paints, but I don't think that's the point when you use it like this. This is to get armies and teams and kill teams and necromunda gangs on the playing field as fast as you can with a decent result. And for the pants I used the Black Templar, which is one of my favorites. Uh, I actually didn't shake the pot enough this time, so it came out kind of thin. But as I was planning on having these pants kind of grayish, I kind of went with it and didn't repaint it. The black paint is uh, really good for armor panels if you uh, want to have some kind of makeshift armor and weapons metal paint since it's really high contrast and uh, I usually do that when I want to move quickly with my armies or my units. I paint weapons and armor with the black and then at a later stage when I have the time I go back and kind of dry brush them with lead belcher or something to get a metallic sheen but it works it works better than I thought to use as a metal paint and um, yeah just be neat at this stage um, the boots and the leather straps I painted with the snake bite leather which is a really good contrast paint it's uh, got some great coverage and uh, also, this paint has high contrast. It, uh, it gets you some really nice highlights immediately. Maybe a little bit too dark shade, but I think it's cool. And it's kind of vibrant. So, kind of like Mornfang Brown, which used to be my go-to 
leather strap paint when I paint normally, but this is good for using when using contrast paints. And for belts, I think contrast paint was invented to paint belts. It's really, really doing the job. And uh, usually, I mean, if you paint this technique on a miniature, kind of a high-end miniature, you can use this technique for belts and you don't even have to highlight them. It's, it's that good. Um, as you can see, I don't even let the previous paints dry. Uh, I just pick an area far away from where I just applied paint and that makes it so much quicker. You just have to be careful not to touch the model where you paint it. And um, also it's a good idea to kind of stay away from an area where you just paint it because then the paints will mix and it'll be weird. For the mouth I used Volopus Pink, which is a really nice vibrant pink color and uh, I think it's very suitable for using on kind of mouths and stuff. And um, yeah, it's, it's a nice pink. I use it a lot to shade uh, pinks and purples uh, and glaze. Contrast Paints has many, many uses apart from this speed painting uh, use. And for the leather, I painted with um, Skeleton Horde, as you can see, the tunic. And now I'm painting all the metal areas with um, Lead Belcher, which is, I don't know, maybe the best paint Games Workshop ever released. Lead Belcher, Balthazar Gold, and Fist on Red. Rackhart Flesh, probably the best paints. I love them, I use them all the time, and they're really good. In the contrast range, I would say Blood Angels Red, Warpstone Glow, Skeleton Horde, Snakebite Leather, and Wild Wood, which I'm using here, uh, diluted with a lot of water, and um, it works fine too, to dilute it with water if you use it like this on, on a base because uh, it soaks up. Uh, if you thin it with water and paint it on bigger areas, it will behave really weirdly and pull away. But if you do it on like bases, it, yeah, it'll last you longer. Some Agrax Earth Shade on the metal parts to make them shaded and a bit dirty and orky. Uh, sometimes I do this instead of null oil, because, I don't know, it looks a bit rusty. Uh, and you just have to use this stage to get that effect. I think it's kind of nice, but very, very simple. Agrax Earthshade is also another really good paint, and I think it's one of the most famous paints. Everyone uses it for everything, including me. For the teeth and nails, I used Bane Blade Brown, which is a good base color, and I Later highlighted it with Rackarth Flesh to get some nice bone color on it. Uh, here you have to be kind of neat not to ruin the previous paint job as uh, it's really hard to <laughs> replicate contrast paints again. And uh, you just want it to be exactly where you intend it. So be neat and careful. For the eyes, I just used a tiny dot of Wild Rider Red, which I think is perfectly adequate for a miniature of this standard. You don't need to highlight that beyond that stage. Some Agrax Earth Shade again on the teeth, just to bring out some shadows. And then finally, to hide all the mistakes and coffee stains uh, that contrast paint kind of causes on big flat panels. I used some Rhinox hide with a sponge to create some damage on the armor. Uh, this is a really good way to get paint chipping from armor and it's easy to achieve and it looks really good. I mean you can highlight each chip with some really bright yellow 
uh, to get an even nicer effect but that that's for character models of display pieces if you're doing rank and file or I mean quick jobs like this this is perfectly enough and uh, I just go in with a brush as a final stage to pick out some extra details and spots where I think I missed with the brush and uh, well, it looks kind of good I think uh, it certainly hides it's easy to hide a lot of mistakes with this <laughs> and uh, I recommend it it's perfect for orcs I use it for my 40k orc army all the time on the vehicles it looks really good finally a few thin coats of steel legion drab on the rim of the base and the paint job is done I didn't put on any transfers at this stage I'll go back and do that when the whole team is finished uh, you will see how to put on transfers on later videos but uh, I would recommend checking out Darren Latham's videos on that he's an excellent painter and hobbyist Hopefully you liked this video and uh, it might help you get your org team on the pitch in a very short time. Good luck! Thanks for watching, I hope you liked that video. I'll try to bring you more content as soon as I can. And uh, I'll do everything from terrain making to converting and painting in different techniques and styles and qualities. Um, but until then, um, let me know what you think in the comment section and please subscribe if you like it. Till next time, bye bye.